So this is joint work with Riccardo Bertolucci, Carmine Dodaro, Giuseppe Galatà, Marco Maratea, Ivan Porro and myself. So um, I will talk a little bit about what is the problem that we were trying to tackle, op operating room schedule. And uh, the solution that we provide to this problem is based on ASP, but this is uh, providing a solution is not enough in this context because uh, we will see uh, there is the need to explain in some cases uh, the behavior of the system. So uh, to this end, uh, we uh, adapted ideas that we developed for another, uh, I would say, related topic, which is debugging of ST programs. And we wanted to see whether this can be used for uh, actually explaining uh, the solution to the operating room schedule. I will show this solution is rather, I mean, it's just a little bit tweak that you have to do to this uh, existing debugging uh, tool. And I'll show you how to explain this operating uh, room system schedule. Then the tool itself uh, has been included in a larger, I mean, uh, platform uh, used by this uh, SurgiQ, uh, SurgiQ company uh, that is basically selling software for uh, operating room schedule, basically. And then there is a conclusion, of course. So what is the problem? First of all, operating room scheduling problem is the task of assigning patients to operating rooms. So it's a very important task uh, in the, the last days. If you can, as you can imagine, there was, and this is not a good news actually, quite a lot of, uh, let's say, people that had to be, uh, let's say, assigned to rooms in hospitals. And this is a complex combinatorial problem. It's and be hard, likely, because there are some, some stuff to optimize and some choices to make to do this assumption. This is a fitting application for ASP. And the colleagues, uh, uh, the, other, the other colleagues that also contributed to this paper, Carmine, and the others already implemented the uh, nice encoding for this. Uh, so basically there is a solution based on ASP for the operating uh, room scheduling problem. Uh, but I mean, uh, sometimes uh, the system is not able to provide answers at all. So if you, have a, if you have a schedule, that's fine. But what if you don't have a schedule, okay? So uh, this, this, becomes, uh, this becomes a very, very important uh, question to answer. Because the user, which is not, I mean, can, cannot look inside the program, cannot understand what happens, it just receives a message, sorry, there is no way to allocate patients to beds, okay, something like this, or to the, to the operating rooms. So, uh, of course, uh, I mean, uh, uh, this is a not a nice condition, but maybe there are too many constraints, or maybe too many, too many patients, or the duration of, of the uh, surgery uh, that you will try to schedule is longer than the time that you have uh, that you have uh, available. So, but the system still has to to provide an explanation for this. Uh, let's say not so nice, uh, not so nice outcome. So, I'll just remind you. Uh, I don't know if this is the case. What is answer set programming? Because I already mentioned it. If I say that there is already a solution based on ASP. This is a declarative programming paradigm. It's basically logic based. Uh, there are a number of efficient systems, Klingo, DLV, that can actually be used to implement the solutions. And there are plenty of applications of industrial grade applications in which ASP has been already uh, used. So the core is to write, uh, to write the logic rules. And uh, I mean, um, uh, this is a, just an example that with ASP says that with ASP, you can encode three colorability and anti-complete problem with just two rules. So it's uh, that the usual claim with ASP is that it's very compact uh, way of modeling problems. The systems are efficient. So, but actually this is not 100% uh, correct, I would say, because having something that is very compact uh, and this is true. If you want to write the same thing in C++, it would take many more lines of code. This doesn't mean that this is easier to write correct specifications. So debugging is something that is needed no matter, I mean, the, the language. And sometimes compact specifications are easier to be mistaken than longer ones in terms of number of errors per line, so to say. 
So we decided to develop something that could explain why the program doesn't behave correctly, which is basically debugging, understanding why the program doesn't, doesn't work. So there are many cases in which a bug can be revealed in an SP program. One or more answer sets are incorrect, or one or more answer sets are missing. And missing answer set is the worst condition, because the system just says incoherent. And you have nothing to, to check why this is incoherent. So our debugger focuses on this condition, on the condition in which there is no answer set at all. And the idea is to go there and outline the faulty rules, the rules that together cannot stay, uh, because if, the, 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 if this is the specification, there is no, no chance to have a model, basically. We call this uh, uh, set of rules uh, that cause the incoherence that are, the, that, that are causing the incoherence of our original program, the reason for the incoherence. And this can be obtained basically as a byproduct of the solving process of modern SP solvers. So imagine this is the, the input program. We have to provide something that we expect. If we add it as an assumption, basically this, this input program becomes incoherent, but this is not because of the entire program. The goal would be to outline the rules that are guilty, so to say. For this reason, what we do, we adorn the program. We add an extra atom to each rule, okay? And then uh, we basically guess a subset of those atoms that makes it uh, coherent. So the number of atoms that you have to read, the rules that you have to remove to restore coherence, okay? Uh, this is the reason of incoherence in, in very few, very few words, an MUS, if you like. Huh? And uh, even if this concept is not precise uh, <laughs> for, for ASP. Uh, so let's call it the reason of incoherence. Then we try to minimize this reason of incoherence because this can be huge. It can be the entire program sometimes. Uh, so after minimizing this, uh, the user can interact. So basically what happens is that you start with the large program and our system tells you, okay, the red ones are the guilty rules. And then you can answer some question to reduce the number of guilty rules to just the last one, for instance, in, in, this, uh, in this example, we don't, we don't have to, let's say, uh, look at it in, in detail because this is just to let, let you understand what the debugger does, okay? So the debugging goal, as we have seen, was to spot rule causing an inconsistency. This was intended for ASP developers. Now we want to cast it for explaining the operating room uh, scheduling. So uh, here, the encoding is correct. We know already, okay? So we, we don't want to find bugs in the encoding. Where can be the problem? Usually with debugging, what you, you have a, a good knowledge base and you want to write a program to get a solution. In the operating room schedule, you have a correct program and likely there is something wrong or I would not say wrong, maybe what you declared in the facts constrains too much the, 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 the solution and there is no solution. So let's do this, let's adorn facts, so to say. So let's keep the idea, but in this case, we, the program is left as it is and we adorn facts. And we also need something more in the, in the tool. Uh, the tool is not for programmers, it's not for SP developers. The tool is for, for doctors, for medical doctors, or for those who manage this, this assignment. So we have to render the explanation in, also in natural language. So basically, this is the input of our program. I, I will not go into the details because, I mean, it's not needed at the moment. This will not change the, I mean, the picture. But of course, the mistake can be in some facts in the, in the set of the inputs that we have. You know, you can imagine what, are the, what the inputs are, the number of beds, uh, uh, the number of uh, surgeries that you have to do, how long it takes usually to do a surgery and so on and so forth. So we want to deliver the explanation of why there is no possible schedule. We compute the reason of incoherence and to, we interpret the result of the tool to provide uh, uh, this uh, uh, thing in natural, uh, the, this outcome in natural language. We did some preliminary experiments on real data, and we basically understood that uh, basically only two types of errors uh, or problems uh, may arise. 
Either there is the, a lack of available beds, so you don't have enough beds for patients, or the duration of certain uh, surgery is higher than the available time, or the sum of the surgeries that you want to schedule is, is, uh, is larger than the available time. So I, either from the beds facts or from the duration facts, uh, you will get this incoherence. So you don't have to guess everything in the input. You can concentrate on those, on those facts. And also, we um, discovered that this is not, uh, I mean, surprising, but it's, uh, it's important to take care of this. The order in which you provide those facts may change the performance of the system. So the system also exploits this uh, to do some, uh, uh, if it takes too much, basically it blocks it and runs it with another order, and this is sufficient to, to, to get the solution in practical case. So basically, we are associated to the facts uh, a possible explanation, and we provide together with uh, the fact, uh, the, the sentence corresponding to some fact, also a number of information to the, um, in the user interface so that the user can understand the reason why there is no possibility with current resources to create, to create a schedule. So the, the module, the debugging tool is basically embedded in a more, let's say, involved application. Uh, the, the idea is that basically, if, if, the, if there is a schedule, you have a solution. If there is no schedule, the system sends the encoding to the debugging tool, tries to find the guilty facts. If it succeeds, this set of guilty facts is interpreted and provided in natural language through the explainability module to the uh, clinical staff. Say. Otherwise, uh, if it takes too much, uh, you, we start splitting the set of facts, uh, trying to remove one by one the elements and in different orders uh, until, uh, the system, until we detect this, uh, this set of facts and, and we can explain the thing. So we integrated the DWASP debugging tool and uh, uh, we modified it in, in order to take care of facts instead of rules. Uh, and uh, we included this tool, this DWASP, inside this uh, larger architecture. So uh, to give you a hint of what can be the performance of the system, we uh, considered different set, sets of facts uh, and um, while increasing the number of uh, causes of problems, okay, in, in, each, in each set. And uh, uh, we repeated each experiment uh, this time. This is the, I mean, if you are curious, this is the setting of the experiments, uh, timeout, uh, memory, uh, and so on and so forth. We measured the capability of the system, first of all, to, provi to provide an answer, what we call coverage, number of times that the system could provide an explanation and also the uh, part 10 score. So how long would it take to have uh, an answer? So this is the result. As, as you can see, I mean, uh, in very many cases we can cover, so we can provide, uh, we can provide uh, an answer, especially uh, these numbers grows and also the number of causes of incoherence grow with this number, okay? So of course there is at some point uh, uh, a decrease uh, in, in performance of the system. But nonetheless, if you look at the PAR measure, the PAR measure is, uh, uh, so to say, uh, acceptable, okay? 200 seconds, which is even more what you can see, is, is okay, in a sense, to wait, to wait. So in conclusion, we developed this uh, tool for explaining uh, uh, the misbehavior, let's say, of the, uh, this tool for uh, operating, uh, system, uh, operating room schedule. Uh, this is going to be included in the SurgiQ platform, which is already based on the original encoding and it's operating at the moment. It is a speed based and uh, integrates our debugging tool. And uh, uh, preliminary experiments say that uh, the performance is acceptable. So I guess they will uh, use it uh, in, the, in their system at some point. So thanks for your attention.